Today, I'm just quickly going to, sorry, just want to do that. Um, today, I'm going to quickly um, explain to you what Baker Baines is. Um, we will discuss design automation, although we did discuss it now in length in a previous, um, in previous webinars. Um, I'm just quickly going to give you a run through again of what automation is, because that's basically the basis of um, iLogic, and that is where we are going to in our industry um, campaign. And um, I will discuss that with you also now in a minute. But then we will look into iLogic, iLogic, uh, what it is and why we should embrace it. We will talk a little bit on the configuring of I Inventor um, to use iLogic, internal versus external rules, parameters and properties, declaring variables, typecasting and shared variables, and then getting started with iLogic, and we will then have a close-off session. So we are running a campaign uh, where we are walking you through the steps that you need to get to designing for Industry 4.0. Um, it's the fourth industrial revolution for those who doesn't know what Industry 4.0 is. And in the event we had a few months ago, we discussed the set steps that we identified on, um, and we started with 2D to 3D design. Um, we then went over to design automation. Today will be the last session on design automation when we end up with iLogic. And then this uh, third step is going to be simulation that we will address in the next few months. So if you've missed any of our previous sessions um, and you would like to catch up on it, uh, you can share, comment, like, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, you can see all of the previous events if you um, want to catch up on any of it. And also in the future, if you are not available to attend a webinar, you might get it on the YouTube channels. So hi, my name is Elandi Berger. I'm the Manufacturing and Process Law Specialist at Baker Baines. I have a Mechanical Engineering Diploma, over 10 years experience in the drawing office as a supervisor, uh, where we used to draw um, protection and automation uh, schemes and panels, um, and also design some of the um, communication and logics and everything that went behind it. I'm very passionate about data management, especially, and training, and then I'm an amateur bass and drum player. I'm going to start off with a poll question. Um, I would just like to know how familiar you are with Baker Baines and all of our offerings. So please just answer very familiar, somewhat familiar or not familiar at all. Sure, you guys are very, very quick. Um, almost everyone voted. I'm just going to give a few more seconds. Maybe someone um, only um, logged in now into the webinar. No. And it looks like most of you are somewhat familiar with us. And then there is a, the rest of the people are split between very familiar and not familiar at all. I'm going to close it now. Thank you for giving us that feedback. Okay. So because you are somewhat familiar and some of you are not familiar with us at all, I'm just going to give you a rundown quickly. So Baker Baines has evolved over the past six years from being an Autodesk reseller uh, to a consulting company, and we set out to solve our customers' problems. We do that through digital transformation, and we try to help you to design and make a better world. In doing so, we offer various business uh, process improvement consulting services, survey and design hardware and consulting, design software consulting, and we top it off with a blended learning approach to how we believe you as our customers should digest information. Right, just a recap on design information, ah, oh, design automation. So three benefits of design automation, just some of the benefits, so that you can design more efficiently. So things like sheet metal parts and welded frames often include standard features, that requires simple but yet tedious modeling. This 
eliminates busy work. If you automate, you create typical product features and that will help you to you know, cut out all the tediousness and make your whole setup more efficient and quicker. You can rapidly configure products to spec. So manually modifying models to meet customer specs can drain your engineering resources. So define parameters to create 3D models and you can easily set rules to drive a custom product configurator. You can accelerate your handoff to manufacturing. You can extend automation beyond engineering with simple to code tools that capture and execute standard processes for the creation of your drawings, your tool paths, and any other documentation that you would like. So with a consistent flood of new tools, it's important to consider if the next best thing is critical to your workflow or simply just a trend. However, some solutions showcase such dramatic efficiency gains that there is no denying the benefits of their implementation. And design automation is one of them. Design automation can benefit any size of organization, regardless of the amount of products that you manufacture. There is likely repeatable patterns and workflows in every single environment. So Ben Cornelius, a senior lead CAD modeler from Dynamic Attractions, said the following. In terms of automation, I take the approach that every second counts. And if I can squeeze a single ounce more out of the system, then that is what I'll do. Some practical ways that you can um, start off with to begin your automation pro um, process. So design automation is an approach that helps you capture and reuse engineering knowledge and intent. Automation technology enables you to easily utilize rule-based design without needing to know how to code. So you might start with design intent, for instance. It's an automated approach that offers options from basic parameters to cloud-based automation. But we will begin with the fundamentals, building in design intent. Your CAD software contains a rule-based system that can be used to drive parameters and attribute values in your models. Design intent can be formulas that update multiple dimensions when you change one, or design intent can set limits to dimensions so your design does not exceed raw material sizes availability in your inventory. You might start with specialized tools. Most of you know the specialized tools by now. It's included in your software. It is a component library that holds configurable models of the parts found in your machinery handbook. You have sheet metal design, part of that. Following the standards that you define, such as sheet metal thickness, bend allowances, and corner treatments, these specialized tools ensure your design meet manufacturing requirements. You get tube and pipe design. And this specialized tool contains all the hardware you need for applying roots or threaded and welded pipe bend tubes and flexible hoses. And you can get uh, weld frame designs. This specialized tool only requires you to build a wireframe and select a cross section and then let the software build the 3D model and even simulate it according to your design. It can even produce a cut list for manufacturing. You might start with product configuration. So build the logic that drives your configurator using the parameters you already captured when creating the 3D model of your design. Essentially, what you are doing is describing your design beyond dimensions, constraints, and formulas you have in your model. And you are adding engineering rules so that changes to the design specification happen automatically. iLogic technology in Inventor can be used to change the design of your model. For example, if a part gets too long, your software could automatically change the material from aluminum to steel to increase the strength for the customer's load requirement. You might want to start with drawing creation. Using automation in your CAD software, you can create a simple form for engineers to complete that will automatically generate the drawing for the specific model or component that the engineer is working on. iLogic can assist in that. Uh, you can create complete drawing sets, define gener uh, and generate drawing views, add dimensions, and that is just to name a few. 
For standard compliance, you can ensure that everyone on your team is following the best practices and consistent procedures by automating the checking process for your standards. Not only will this save you time, money and material, but because it's done correctly the first time, it will improve the overall quality of your products. When it comes to batch processing, most of you already know most of this, you have model simplification and model cleanup. With model simplification, for example, you might have a part or create a part for a car that will be by, manufactured by an automotive company. You need to design and deliver that part, but you don't want to send out your proprietary information and you also don't want to include all the information of every nut and bolt that's used. So in these cases, you can use batch processing to create a simplified representation of that model. For model cleanup, if you receive a folder of drawings and there's a whole lot of missing information on the title block, you can run a process that opens all of them and adds the information you need. As quickly and as simple as that. We're going to look at a video done by Autodesk on how they see automation and where it is going. We automated the tasks of detailing technical drawings with AutoCAD. We automated the creation of drawings from a 3D model with Autodesk Inventor. And we continue to automate your design and engineering process from sales proposal to your product's end of life. In this video, we'd like to highlight some of the automation tools available to you in Inventor and the product design and manufacturing collection. A 3D model provides a single source of data. Your drawings are views of your 3D model. Any update to the model is reflected in every drawing that references it. Inconsistencies are eliminated and drawing errors are substantially reduced. Your investment in a 3D model doesn't stop at drawing coordination. You can use your 3D model to create visualizations of your design for marketing, simulations of your design for stress analysis or tolerancing, automatically extract a bomb for procurement, or create tool paths for manufacture. All of these examples are queries of our three-dimensional database. Queries that can help us automate downstream processes to improve quality and decrease time to market. You don't want to spend time modeling standard components like nuts and bolts, you don't have to. The Autodesk Inventor Content Center allows you to generate over 750,000 standard components, from fasteners to shaft components, and from rooted systems to structural steel. The Content Center libraries cover 18 international standards, including ISO, ANSI, and DIN. In addition to the standard components included, you can publish your own parts and manage them with Content Center. Content Center supports Inventor's design accelerators, a collection of rule-based design tools that allow you to quickly generate components around your functional requirements. Add fasteners or design a frame, power transmission or spring system directly from Content Center components. No need to model any parts yourself. Autodesk Inventor's sheet metal tool set is specifically designed to help you develop your sheet metal components. Inventor's sheet metal modeling tools automate the creation of standard sheet metal features, and they follow the standards you define, such as sheet metal thickness, bends, corner treatments, and unfolding rules to ensure your designs meet your manufacturing requirements. When you're ready to create a flat pattern, Inventor does all the calculations for you based on your manufacturing standards, such as K-factor or bend allowance tables, ensuring you have an accurate, unfolded 2D profile for downstream use. Autodesk Inventor provides you with tools to easily document both your folded and flat patterns. You can share your designs with manufacturing as a drawing, as a DXF profile, or you can take advantage of Inventor nesting to automatically create nests of your unfolded profiles. Inventor nesting automatically groups components of similar material types and thicknesses onto individual sheets, and then calculates nesting efficiency based on parameters and options you define such as mirroring, spacing and rotation. In the frame design environment, Inventor automates the process of building parametric frame assemblies with tools specifically created for building your frames, applying end treatments and analyzing the performance of your design. Begin by inserting frame members into your parametrically controlled skeleton model, specifying the family, size and material from a library containing thousands of standard profiles. 
when your frame is complete, corner treatments can be used to trim, mitre, or create notches between members, and end caps can be inserted from content center to terminate free ends. Frame members are automatically numbered based on your preferred file system and part numbering scheme, and a cut list is automatically generated, including end treatments. The standardized nature of frame design also makes it easy to set up and perform structural analysis to make sure your design performs as required. For the automation of piping routes, Inventor's tube and pipe environment adds tools for the design of rigid and flexible pipes, bent tubes and flexible hoses for your mechanical assemblies. Create a route in 3D using the Auto Route tool or a route you define yourself. When you're ready, Inventor will automatically populate your route following the specification and standards that you set in the tube and pipe library. When modifying or updating designs, components placed from Content Center will automatically orient and size themselves appropriately. When the design is complete, Inventor helps you to create your required outputs for procurement and manufacturing with isogen drawings and a bill of materials to quantify the components needed for the design. Product configurators have been proven to save engineering time and accelerate sales growth of custom products. In the past, setting up the rules and logic behind a design configurator and making it accessible to sales reps and engineers often required specialized programming knowledge, significant investments in development, and a lot of time. With Inventor, however, setting up and deploying a product configurator has never been easier. First, you define the logic behind the configurator. This is easy to code with Inventor iLogic technology. Next, once logic has been defined, you can create forms inside Inventor to provide a more intuitive front end for the configurator. Simply select which parameters, rules, and I properties you want available for configuration, and they're automatically added to your form, no programming required. With the product configured, unique customer requirements may require additional fine tuning. Inventor Nastran is integrated directly inside the CAD environment, so you can quickly perform advanced stress, fatigue, and thermal analysis to evaluate the performance of the desired design. Include CNC toolpaths in your initial design and let iLogic update them for you as the design changes. Automated design and configuration processes help you get from design to manufacturing faster. You can deliver custom products to your customers at scale. Beyond the configuration of the designs, Inventor's iLogic automation toolset helps you to preserve corporate knowledge by building design rules into your model prevent inexperienced users choosing design configurations that are not possible to manufacture, and reduce the amount of work required to check drawings for manufacturability. Automate the creation of drawings and design documentation from your Inventor models with iLogic and Inventor's intelligent template files. Any task in your design process that you identify as being repetitive or low value can be automated with an iLogic rule. iLogic and the Inventor API turns Inventor into a platform on which you can automate your entire design to manufacture process. Your configurable designs, built on Inventor's automation tools and the power of iLogic, are fully compatible with the Inventor Design Automation API on Autodesk's Forge development platform. Leverage the intelligence you've already built into your Inventor model on the desktop to provide access to your team members and customers via the web. Integrating price information to your design configuration can improve the speed at which you can generate RFQs and proposals, securing the knowledge that the quotation you provide is a match for the cost of your proposal. Autodesk Forge is a unique cloud-based development platform on which you can build or implement applications that tap into the power of web-hosted versions of the core engines from Inventor, Revit, 3D Studio Max, and AutoCAD. With the Forge platform, you can process your workflows on the cloud and continue to work efficiently on your local machine, the type of jobs that could be highly repetitive or may need large-scale processing power. This also allows you to exchange product data with various business systems, including ERP, MRP, or PLM. By linking your data in the cloud to your other systems, you can leverage data from third parties in your automation workflows. With Autodesk, you can automate your tasks and processes, automate your design standards, automate the creation of design documentation and manufacturing data, automate the creation of sales proposals, and connect your design and engineering data to the rest of your company's processes from manufacturing to procurement, from sales to servicing, with Autodesk Inventor and the Autodesk Forge platform.
Okay, so a poll question that I would like to ask you now is, are you familiar with iLogix? Before we start with iLogic, just want to get an idea of how many of you already use it. Did you maybe hear of it, but don't know how to start, or have you never heard of it before? Also nice to see. At least I'm not preaching to a choir. A lot of people have never heard of this before and um, those are actually the type of people that we would like to, um, well, would like to get on board and get automating. Okay, I'm going to close off the polls now. The long awaited iLogic. So, just some background on all of this. So, for the most part, um, people who use any type of desktop application understand what automation is. If you've used Microsoft Excel, you may have heard of macros and tools that, develop, uh, that are developed and designed within Excel to accomplish a specific task. So inventor automation is very much the same in the sense that while automation can take the form of many different, um, well, things, in essence, it is a tool or a series of tools that automatically um, accomplish a specific task. It can also accomplish a specific process or function, and iLogic is one form of inventor automation. So iLogic is a functionality of Inventor that allows users and administrators to create logic in the form of VB.net to accomplish tasks. Rules are developed and organized using snippets and other code writing uh, statements to run at given times to consistently do some of the work engineers and designers need to do. You could develop a series of iLogic rules to do things like updating iProperties based upon different model criteria or replacing components in an assembly based upon selections made in an iLogic form or even update textbooks within an associated drawing. The list is very long to what iLogic can do. The question is, what do you want it to do for you? So now that we understand what iLogic is, let's take a look at the reasons why you might want to incorporate iLogic into your engineering processes. In our experience, working with manufacturing companies, big and small, all over South Africa, fabricating and manufacturing many different types of products, one thing always rings through. There are patterns and repeatable plays in every environment. The key is to find the ones where iLogic can be of assistance. This simple task requires an intimate knowledge of all the places Inventor plays a part in your process. Say, for instance, you have a specific format for the iProperty description of your 3D models or any of the iProperties for that matter. If the formatting is predictable, if um, it is standardized, then this is the situation where iLogic can come to the rescue. You could develop iLogic to collect information from the model transform that information and then overwrite the I properties. If you use the correct newly formatted information, this is very easy and quick to do. It's always correct, it's always consistent, and it never asks for a coffee break. So FS Elliott, they are air compressor manufacturers. They use, they use iLogic um, in Inventor to accomplish uh, a lot of their tasks in minutes that used to take them days and or weeks. According to them, the parts that they make have to be very precise. And uh, the model that manually takes a lot of time uh, to create um, are just a lot quicker when they use iLogic in Inventor. And they'd ask themselves, 
is there a better way of doing this before they started with this whole process? According to Lane Wilson, the CAD technician, he says that it is very quick and easy to learn. And iLogic has become instrumental to the CAD uh, portions of their manufacturing processes. iLogic codes have allowed them to reduce lead times and fulfill customer orders efficiently. A process that usually took them weeks has now been compressed into a matter of days and even hours. So although iLogic is included in Inventor and you can start creating and using iLogic right away, it's helpful to understand that there are some settings that should be addressed in order to use iLogic to its fullest extent. The iLogic configuration button allows users to configure different settings to define where Inventor will find supporting information. Users and administrators will want to modify these settings to control where Inventor will find external rule directories, as well as the order priority for those directories. The settings dialog box gives users the opportunity to set what file extension external rules will be saved as, and the default logging level in which debugging information can be produced. There are also some security option settings to protect your computer and network systems from potentially hazardous code running within Inventor environment. So some of the updates in Inventor 2022 is first of all, the iLogic support for model state. iLogic is expanded to support the following model state workflows, which was the this doc dot document and the add with model state. So the model state activated was added to the rules on events in your event trigger um, dialog box. They also added iLogic support for instant properties. So you use the new instant property snippets to read and create instant properties. And that is added in your edit rule dialog box at the bottom and you can see it there, instance properties and instant property expression. They also added iLogic support for user parameter change event. There's a new event named any user parameter change in the event triggers dialog box. And this event is triggered when you change the value of the user parameter. And then iLogic deployment enhancement was added. You can now create a deployment that includes your customized settings in the iLogic configuration dialog box. In the application options dialog box, you can click export. Export saves the current application options and the settings in the iLogic configuration dialog box to a .xml file. When creating your deployment, select I would like to import custom settings and enter the path to the export.xml file. Internal versus external, what do I use? iLogic rules come in two flavors, internal rules and external rules. Either type of rule is created similarly within the context of Inventor in the iLogic browser. Internal rules are rules that are created and stored within the context of a file. Part assembly and drawing files all have the capability to store, compile, and run rules to affect each file differently. External rules are pretty much the same. However, they are not stored within the Inventor files. Because internal rules are stored within the files, they are exposed and accessible to the users that have permission to those files. External rules are stored, stored in a directory, um, either locally on a user machine or central on a server. So it's geographically agnostic. Because external rules are stored in a folder outside of the files, there can be a higher level of security to those rules. Yes, users can open and see the rule code. However, system administrators can control access and editability by defining the folder permissions to the external rules folder. For this reason, external rules are preferred in an enterprise environment where numerous users might want to run code throughout the design process. If conditions do not require permission control or if multiple users do not need to utilize the rule logic simultaneously, then perhaps internal rules are sufficient. Both types of these rules are visible within the logic browser, as seen in these images shown. 
Right clicking on either type of rule can control features like suppressing or unsuppressing rules to control when they are triggered, deleting rules or removing them from the list. So we're going to go back a little bit again to parameters and properties, um, just to refresh those people that attended the previous webinar and to now also inform the people that is attending this webinar for the first time. Autodesk Inventor is a 3D parametric design application. That means that parameters are name value placeholders of a specific type. Most parameters in Inventor are numeric in type and are associated to dimensions that control geometry. As parameter values changes, the dimensions associated to those parameters change as well. Graphically updating the models. There are essentially four types of parameters in Inventor. The model parameters, user parameters, reference parameters, and linked parameters. Model parameters are those parameters created by normal inventor behavior. In the parameters dialog box, under model parameters, you will see them as D, D0, D1, D2, etc. Model parameters are controlled by inventor, meaning they are created and deleted as necessary by the system. User parameters are those parameters created by users. They can be numeric, text, string, or true and false or boolean. You can add them here at the bottom where it says add numeric and it will add them there a size and round one in your user parameter list. Something to note and to be very careful about is creating user parameters by applying a naming convention and type is the preferred method of using parameter information in iLogic rules. Although you can rename your normal uh, your model parameters, it is not the preferred method of use. Reference parameters are created when Inventor defines a driven dimension. If you've ever seen this dialog box when working in the sketch environment, selecting accept in this situation would create a reference parameter. In the parameters dialog box, you will see the parameter name and value, but you cannot change the value. You can change the name, which is helpful in using the value in iLogic code. Linked parameters are those parameters, and yes, you've guessed it, they are linked typically to an Excel spreadsheet. When a user updates the names and values in an Excel spreadsheet, those changes will reflect in Inventor, ultimately driving dimension values, controlling feature, and managing assemblies, just to name a few. Properties and I properties in Inventor Lingo are additional descriptors or other valuable information about your files. This is sometimes referred to as metadata. So metadata are nothing new and can be extremely useful when trying to collect a lot of data about files. So the properties will be file name, file size, author, modified date, all of them are properties. Most of the time when working with iLogic and Inventor file data, file name and file path are the two most common properties to handle. Other popular pop properties are part number, stock number, description, mass, cost, and custom properties. All properties are read, most properties are write enabled. So I'm just going to quickly run through two scenarios that we have here. Um, the definite and indefinite variants, where we have a, a model that we have, uh, it's got two components, 70 sizes and two materials each. The second scenario has indefinite assembly variants, two components, range of sizes, one decimal and two materials each. So managing unique variants and reuse of this specific uh, model. Well, um, we are going to look at the difference and uh, um, oh, my word. the difference and how much more easy it is to do this through Bolt, for instance, compared to when you do the normal logics within Inventor. So iLogic Bolt outperforms your manual or um, iPart or iAssembly workflows for both scenarios. So we can check unique components and check unique assemblies. 
can reuse or create components and open or create individual assemblies. I'm going to show you this short video. So this sample has two key dimensions. The diameter that applies to both parts and then the length that applies to the inner ring only. Each part allows for the selection of two different materials. Metals for the flange, plastic flange and plastic for the ring. We generate a unit key for the individual configuration for each part and parent assembly consuming them. We start with our default configuration. We generate a unit key for the individual configuration for each part and parent assembly consuming them. Volt previous, uh, preview indicates that both parts in the assembly exist having unique part numbers. As we change the length, our iLogic rule shows that a ring of this size is not found. Let's start the creation of the new variant iLogic, copies variants to the new files on the Volt server and executes the manage components function, adding and constraining the components and fasteners to the new empty assembly. Finally, the rule checks in the file. It updates the configuration preview and our new assembly and inner ring are listed. We can also now view other options. Getting started with iLogic. Oh, this is the exciting part. So an iLogic rule controls the model geometry based on the length of this connecting rod. So I opened up this um, connecting rod. It already had parameters assigned to it. So the first thing I do is go through the parameters list and get acquainted with every single um, uh, parameter that was added to this specific model. I added a user parameter that was style at the bottom and I added it with text. If I right click in any of the cells at the bottom, I can choose a multi-value drop-down list. It will open up this dialog box that you see. So I added new items, heavy underscore duty and light underscore duty. If you remember, we discussed this um, previously as well. When it comes to parameters, um, spaces are not allowed. It needs to have an underscore or everything should be combined together in one word. So I added those two and then this dialog appeared. So now I can drop down and I can choose the style that I want this connecting rod in, heavy duty and or light duty. After that, I went into my iLogic browser, which you can get next to your model browser. If you guys are used to your model browsers, you can know that if you click on the plus sign next to it, it will open up the iLogic browser. And um, in the rules, that I have the length rule that was created previously before I started this. So I'm going through this rule of mine and seeing what it is that it's required from us and is it what I actually want. So they tell us that if the length is smaller and equal than 80, then the parameter of the small hole outer diameter must be 17 and the parameter of the large hole outer diameter must be 19. And or else, if the length is bigger than 80, then the small hole outer diameter must be 20 and the large hole outer diameter must be 23. I'm not going to drill down in the rest of the coding. We just want to see those ones change and see how it works in real life. Right, in this case, I would just go close. If I now go back into my parameters and I change the length to 90, you will see that it updated 23 for this diameter and 20 for that. I went back into parameters and I changed the length to 55. It updated to 19 and 17. Let's look to if this was actually applied correctly. So smaller than equal to is this one. The small hole outer diameter is supposed to be 17. Yes, it is. Large hole outer must be 19. If it's bigger than 80, which is this one, um, the small hole outer diameter should be 20 and the large hole outer diameter should be 23. And yes, that is. Very quick, very easy, very painless. 
So just an application sample where iLogic and Vault once again uh, takes hands is in this filter type that we're adding, we've got uh, seven different types that we would like to maybe add to uh, this component of ours. Now, when working with iLogix and Inventor, you would start off with a static selection list of filters. So it gives you the list and you would choose from here. Then you would actually select the filter. You will insert the filter with a code that was written or a rule in iLogix and you will apply the constraints once again with the code. I'm going to play this video for us. Oops, sorry for that. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, so now there's a form that was created for Vault with iLogic, and we can now drill down and see that there's three different variants. And those are the three that was actually um, downloaded to my local machine. If you know Vault, you will know that you download to your local machine. So the filter type and part family is used to actually set up this list. Adding more filters to the family will add these to the list. I'm going to add more filters to that part family and we will see what's going to happen now. They're all part of the same family. If we're going to Inventor, drop down, and it refreshes, you will see that all seven are now added to our form that was created for iLogix. If we go back into Vault and we refresh, you will see that the consumed parts were downloaded automatically to your Inventor workspace. Let's say, for instance, we want to move these files now to a different folder. It's not advisable. Please, this is just for demonstration purposes. So these are now moved to a different location, as you can see at the top. If I go back into Inventor in my form, none of those filters were taken from our list. They all stayed there. The list continues filling based on the search results that were required. So using iLogic with Vault in rules removes the dependencies of the file locations and downloads consumed files only. And that is how easy it is when you combine iLogic and Vault. A last practical example. In this part of mine, um, I've created user parameters, long, short, and standard that I would like to create a rule for. So I'm going to add a rule. I'm going to name it size and OK. I would like three different sizes to be added. Choose if then and end if. Choose to use the parameters, highlight my expression and double click on size. Size is equal to short. I'm going to save and run. Nothing happened. We didn't say what should short do. Short was just a word that we've added there. If you do not give it actually a dimension or something that it needs to do, then it will not be able to change anything on your part. Well, I think that is common sense. But for those that might make this mistake, that's what is going to happen. Now I've added a length of 80. When I go into parameters and I change it to short, you will see that my part updated. I choose standard and long and nothing happened. We once again didn't add any rules for long and for standard. We only applied a dimension to short. So it didn't see that there's supposed to be a change. I'm going to add an else if to my and my expression will change to um, standard. I'm going to add size is equal to standard. And then the length should be equal to 90. I'm going to add another else if. If my size is long in my user parameters, this size is equal long, then in the model parameters, I choose length is equal to. 100. I'm going to save, close, and update my parameters. 
and see what happens. And this really can make your life so much easier, especially as you've heard earlier, if you want to standardize, because someone cannot just go and change this now, they need to actually go and filter and see what this can bring to the table. And then you know that it is designed correctly. If you toggle between all three of those settings now, you will see that they go from short to standard to long and vice versa. Very interesting, really nice. Okay, so as I've discussed with you earlier, this webinar is part of a series that we are doing. Um, our campaign is about getting you to Industry 4.0, and the next step is simulation. So we will discuss simulation in next month's webinar and um, see how that goes. If you are interested in simulation, then please join us for the next webinar. The last poll question. want to launch it. Is your company ready to automate your designs? Yes, we are ready and we know what to do. Or yes, we are ready, but we need training and or guidance. You might have all the training in the world, but don't know what to do with it. And no, we are not ready and we need guidance on what to do next. Now, remember, the goal of this whole webinar series of ours is to get you guys to design in industry 4.0 so that you as a company are not left behind if you cannot do automation then the next steps are going to be a lot more difficult if you struggle with 2d to 3d design or you are not even on 3d designs yet and you need help with that by all means we can assist you in that as well there's about five seconds left of the poll this time, not a lot of people are actually voting. I'm going to give it a few more seconds. Very interesting. Most of you guys are ready and you know exactly what to do. If most of you said earlier that um, you don't know iLogics, I think you need to reevaluate a little bit. Anyway, uh, thank you. I'm going to close the polls now. Right, so although most of you said that you are already busy with automation and you are happy with doing it, if you want to design more efficiently and you want to rapidly configure your products to speak, accelerate hand of the manufacturing, standardize your designs and spend less time on checking your drawings, then I would suggest that you contact us if you are not already doing that. If you are one of those companies that says, that you do not have the software to enable you to do all of this, then we sell the Autodesk products and we can give you guidance and help you to get the best fit for your solution uh, for your um, company. We can help to get a solution for you that can assist you in the long run with all of your software requirements. If you're one of those companies that says that you are not yet where you should be on the steps to Industry 4.0, you might need guidance on 2D to 3D design, automation, and even simulation that's coming up next month. We can assess your business and we can help you to tailor make a, a strategy that can get you on your way to get to Industry 4.0. And if you say that, well, everything else is in place, but the staff is not trained up, or you might have new employees, we can arrange training on site and customize to your needs if COVID allows. If not, we can still customize to your needs at least and have virtual meetings and training sessions. We have an iAdopt system that will explain all of this in one go. So, what is iAdopt? It's a unique consulting methodology in which we help our clients. We help you to develop and implement a digital strategy and transformation. We help you to optimize your business processes and your workflows. And we help you to adopt your technology. And we do all of that with trying or not with, we are trying to get you to design and make a better world. So that is why we do all of this. Now, I adopt benefits of this is that it focuses on solving your problems. It delivers tangible outcomes and we address your organizational issues holistically. 
and we go beyond the care environment and it even includes change management. So if you would like to get in touch with us, uh, you can get in touch with us on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, any of those platforms. Um, you can call our support desk from Monday to Friday between 8 and half past 11 at night. We are available for you. Um, you can phone on the telephone number 011-568-2060 or email support at bakerbains.com. Now, thank you so much for attending this webinar. I really enjoyed giving this. Um, 